What is up, everybody? Good morning. Uh, well, from Los Angeles this morning, wherever you are in the world, good day, good evening, whatever time it is there to you. Thank you guys so much for joining. And as you guys know, we are now in full-on SAT mode. This is SAT week, and the SAT is going to be given one week from today. So this week is all about preparing you guys, especially for the math section in particular. I've been doing these, these live streams and these prep sessions uh, for a little while now. And I've been getting great feedback, which is why I want to make sure to give you guys as many days as possible. A lot of you have asked specifically, instead of five days like I usually did, Sunday through Thursday or something like that, Monday through Friday, I am giving you guys seven full days <coughs> excuse me, of SAT prep, so Saturday all the way through Friday. Each day I'm going to be tackling a section of a math, actual math test. In the first six days it will be official SATs, and then on Friday we're going to be going over a resource uh, from Dr. John Chung, uh, those at one of his SATs, the first practice test. So we're going to be tackling that entire math section, calculator and non-calculator. So today we've got the official March SAT from 2019. Uh, this is the official one that was given in the U.S. I'm going to be going through the entire non-calculator section today. Now, for those of you guys who are new to my channel and these live streams, I'm taking this test under real test taking conditions. So that means I'm timing myself and I'm doing it, I'm essentially meaning to do it for the first time as if I, I've never seen the test before. Now, one caveat with this test, I actually have seen some of the questions before because I worked over it with one of my SAT students, private students in the US. So it's not completely fresh, but for the most part, most of these questions I'm seeing for the first time and I'm tackling them live on camera. The reason why I do that is because I want to make sure that you guys get the authentic experience, see what it's like to actually take these problems under real time conditions and see how I have to problem solve and think on my feet when it comes down to things. Even if I, if I, if I see something that throws me off, how I, how I recover and process. So without further ado, oh, last but not least, uh, if you, so after I go through these, this entire test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then come off and at 8.15, which is in 45 minutes from now, I'll, I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can quickly on the live stream. Then I'm going to go over to a private session uh, through something called Click Meeting. Now, if you're interested in joining the session after, it's just going to be for a half an hour, but for the few people that join, it'll be an opportunity to talk with me directly and, and send me specific questions like, hey, you can ask me anything you want about the test or give me a sample problem and I'll knock it out right there for you guys. The link is in the description. Just click on that click meeting and it's $10 to join uh, for that half an hour. And I'll be doing more of these if you guys like that more intimate setting uh, where, where you pay a little bit. Okay, so today we're just, so Bra Hesha is asking how many hours today will the session be? We're just doing a no calculator section. So that's gonna take 25 minutes. And then after that, uh, I'm gonna open it up to, to some questions if you guys want me to go over specific ones. So again, I'm taking under time conditions. Here we go. I'm going to get to the timer. Again, this is a no calculator section. Ready, set, begin. Okay, Tony spends $80 per month on public transportation. A 10, a 10 ride pass costs $12.50, single cost this. If G represents the number of 10 ride passes he buys in a month, T represents the store. Which of the following equations best represents the relationship between G and T? So he spends $80 per month and 10 ride pass costs six. dollars so, so we have... 1250 times T, which is the, no, sorry, where is this thing? G represents 10 right past. 1250 times G, because that's the total cost of those guys, plus 150 times, what is it, single right? T. Uh, and that's the equation. And this total equals $80 because the total amount of money he spends is whatever he spends on these passes plus whatever he spends on these passes, and that equals 80. There's our equation. 1250G plus 150T, boom, done. Okay, next. In the equation above, T represents Brittany's total, sorry, I gotta move this down a little bit, can't see it. In the equation above, uh, T represents Brittany's total take-home pay in dollars for her first week of work, where H represents the number of hours she worked in that week, 1,000 represents sign-on bonus. If Brittany's total take-home pay was 1576 so that's my total, uh, how many hours did she work? So literally all I'm doing is plugging and chugging and solving for, oops, that's supposed to be an H, not an L, and solve for a, a H. So I'm going to isolate by subtracting 1,000. That's 576 equals 18H. Now we have to divide both sides 
by 18. I don't think I can do this mentally. So 576 divided by 18 is, oh, sorry, 3 is 54. 3, bring down the 6, it's 2. So it's 32. Boom. Next, a clothing store. This thing has been glitching with the movement, so I have to use my mouse, not my pen. Okay, the a clothing store is having a sale on shirts and pants. During the sale, the cost of each shirt is 15. The cost of each shirt is 15. I can see they're using S and P for those. And the cost of each pair of pants is 25 for each pair of pants. Jock can spend at most 120, so this has to be less than or equal to 120. Boom, and we're just trying to find an inequality. 25P has to be less than or equal to, that's it. Done. What is the solution to this? Let's isolate. First, I'm going to distribute. Anytime I see parentheses, distribute negative 3x. And then negative times a negative is a positive 15. That can be one where they'll definitely trip you up and catch you with that mistake. Now, let's isolate x. I'm going to, no, you know what? I'm going to not go that way. I'm going to go this way so we have a positive x just to make life easier. Bring 3x over there. And then I'm going to simultaneously subtract 4 from both sides. 3x plus negative 2x is x. And 15 minus 4 is 11. Done. Okay, we are on to the next page. We did four questions in about three minutes. That's pretty good. Next, we've got for the function defined above, what is the value of f of negative 1? Plug negative 1 into all the x's. Okay, so negative 1 cubed is negative 1 plus negative 1 squared is just positive 1, so it's plus 3. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6 minus 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2 plus 6 is 8, minus 1 is 7. See how I'm kind of writing down? I'm going fast, but I'm still being careful. I'm still being thorough. Okay, next, triangle ABC. What, okay, we got two triangles, and they're similar, and they are not drawn out. So guess what I'm going to do? Draw them out. And similar does not mean same size. It just means proportionate. A, B, C, D, oops, E, F. Okay. Uh, a, B, and D, E, of course, corresponding, and D, E equals 2 A, B. So if this is X, double this is D, E. And the perimeter of triangle is A, B, C. The perimeter of D, E, F is, is uh, double that, 40. If the, side length, if the side lengths are double, then the perimeter is double. It's different with area, but that's all you need to know. Done. Okay, next. And you could even just, I didn't even need to do these di diagrams. I could have just plugged 20 in there. But I do it as a matter of course regardless because it's a good, it's a good strategy to follow, a good protocol. Next, there are no jackrabbits in Australia before 1978 when 24 jackrabbits were introduced. By 1920, the population had reached 10 billion. So 24, and then it becomes 10 billion. Population grown exponentially. This would correspond to a 16.2% increase on average. I already know that this value, because I'm familiar with um, these, that the value in here has to be this, because this is 116.2%. That's the equivalent, right? Because if it's growing at 16.2 each year, it's 116.2% of the previous year. That in decimal format is this. I already know this is the right answer, but let's just read it. And then 24, this is my initial value for an exponential growth equation, and that's right there. And then to the T, and that's each year, and that's why T is up there. Done. Which of the following is equivalent to this? Okay, simplify. So we're going to add like terms. That's 7x to the fourth. Add like terms. That's 9x cubed. Nothing changes with the exponent. 7x to the fourth. 9x cubed. Done. If the function f is defined by this and the function g is defined, which of the following translations are the graphs? Okay, this is a translation. When, the, when we're adding 3 to the outside of the function, to the whole function, we're just going up by 3. That's it. 3 units upward. That is all you need to know. All right, see, it's glitching. Uh, not moving. Let me try again. Okay, in the figure above, segments AE and BD are parallel. Boom, boom. Mark up the, mark up the diagram. If angle BDC measures 58 and angle ACE, ACE measures 62, boom. Um, what is the measure of CAE? We need to do this one, okay? Uh, these are parallel. This is equal to this. This is also 58. And by the way, I can figure this out. By all triangles, the angles add up to 180, so that's um, 7120. So this must be 60, okay? Because then these three add up. And if this is 60, x is 60. Because these are corresponding angles. Uh, and this is also 58 down here. But x is 60, right? Oh, let me just make sure. They want C, A, E, C, A, E. Yeah, we're done. Okay, boom. Next, let's go down. We're about, we're halfway done. 
an oceanographer uses the equation blah, blah, blah to model speed, okay, which is, all right, all of this, who cares? Look what they're doing, nice, isolating P, let's do it. S equals three halves P, multiply both sides by two thirds, multiply both sides by two thirds, boom, boom, uh, that's it. Two thirds S equals P. P equals two thirds S. Oh, whoops, what am I doing? Okay, all this stuff they try and confuse you, so be, be wary, especially if they're just, this is just isolating something, just do it. Which of the following could be an equation for the graph shown in the x, y? Okay, so it's got a y intercept of one, two, three, four, so it's y equals four out here, and then the slope is, we're going down four to the right, three, six, down four, and then to the right six, or negative two thirds. Negative two thirds x plus four. What? Oh, here. What? Hold on. The graph. Wait a minute. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my God. You see? They got me. Okay, check this out. Uh, the, the numbering is different. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Thank God they didn't have that answer because I would have gotten it wrong. That's really bad. So it's down four over twelve negative four over 12, which is negative, which reduces to negative one third, negative one third x plus four. Whew, that was close. Oh, shoot. Tricky, tricky. Whoops, I'm zooming out for some reason. I don't know why, hold on. There we go. Okay, note, figure not drawn to scale. Triangle blank is inscribed in the circle. If arc FG, here, let me do a little highlighting. Arc FG, do, 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 is congruent to GH. These guys are congruent. Oops. And the measure of G is 30. The measure of angle, what? G is 30. Okay, the theorem, I already know. What is the measure of angle H? The theorem is that if if this angle cuts out this arc and this angle here cuts out the exact same size arc, these two angles have to be equal. But even if you don't know that theorem, you could probably assume that or deduce that or like kind of guess that. So these guys have to, they all have to add up to 180. So then these, if this is 30, these must add up to 150 and they're equal. So they both have to be 75. And that's it. Which of the following is equivalent to this? Um, okay, let's factor. So again, even if you don't know what to do, this is a fourth root, but let's factor. I said that was one of the rules. Just instinctively do that. This is x plus 4 times x plus 4, which is <clears throat> fourth root um, x plus 4 squared, which is the same at, whoops, which is the same as, watch what I'm going to do with fractional exponents. This is 2 over 4, or to the 1 half. But guess what? x plus 4 to the 1 half is just the same as square root of x plus 4. Boom. Uh, oh, right here. The square x plus 4 to the 1 half. Next. In the equation above, a, b, or blah, blah, blah. A, uh, I, somebody sent this to me, so I have seen this one before. This is a tough one. a and b are constants, and a, is, they're both positive, but a, b is greater than a. Okay, first I'm going to get this into slope-intercept form right off the bat because I don't know what any of this means. So b, y equals negative ax plus b, then divide everything by b, boom. y equals negative a over b x, and then b over b is one, okay? So now we've got a, we got a y-intercept of one. That's amazing. So I can immediately eliminate this guy. The rest are good. Next, I got a slope of negative a over b. It's a negative slope. Oh, they're all negative, so that doesn't help. And then it says a is, or sorry, b is greater than a. So this can't be like 3 over 2. It's got to be like 1 over 2 or 2 over 3 or something like that because a is smaller than b according to this, which means th this would be if they're equal because this is a slope of negative 1. That's out. This is a slope of negative 2 over 4 or one over two, this could work. I think that's it probably, yeah. And look, this is a slope of negative two over one. And I said that that can't be the case. We can't have the A be bigger. So negative two over one wouldn't work, so it's C. Next. 
Uh, 16. Okay, these are free response questions. <clears throat> so we made it to the free response. Next, what is, we got really good time, 13 minutes for five problems. Now again, you're gonna see the first three, like I, say, I said in my recent video, the first three are usually pretty easy. Uh, 16, 17, 18, let's see if that's true. X plus X equals nine. What value of X, okay, so it's two X equals nine. Isolate by dividing by two, boom. X equals, you could probably grid it in as 4.5 or nine, nine divided by two. Next, what is the solution? First things first. Actually, watch this, I'm gonna factor out 11. X minus three over X minus three equals X. Cross cancel, uh, sorry, cross off these guys, right? And then it's just 11 equals X, and there's your answer. You just can grid in 11. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure, like I, I always like to plug this back in to make sure it's right. If I plug 11 back in, I get 121 minus 33 over eight, and this should equal 11, right? Uh, 121, hold on, minus 33. 10 is eight, zero is 11 is eight. Yeah, and 88 divided by eight is 11, so we're good there. Excellent. Next, x, y is the solution of the system above. What is the, okay, so remember this. Don't just solve for x and y, we need to get this, but let's solve the system. And I'm thinking sub, uh, elimination. I always actually uh, defer to elimination, it's my favorite. But see, we can match the y's up. We already got a negative y down there, so I'm gonna multiply the entire bottom equation by three. We'll watch what happens. 2x plus 3y, again, elimination is where we try and knock out one of the variables. So we just have a single variable equation minus 3y equals 90. Okay, let's add them together. 9x plus 2x is 11x. These guys cancel out. This equals 121. Divide both sides by 11. And that's nice numbers. x equals 11. Notice how my good mental math skills helps me go really fast. So make sure to work those out this week as much as possible. Now let's solve for y. I'm going to plug it into the bottom one. Why not? 30, so it's 33. 11 times 3 is 33 minus y equals 30. Subtract 33, whoops, boom, negative y equals negative 3, 30 plus negative 33 is negative 3, or y equals positive 3, multiply both sides by negative 1. Boom, y equals 3, x equals 11, plug them into this. 100 times 11 plus 40 times 3, that's 1100 plus 120 equals, whoops, uh, let's put it over here, what is that, 1220? 12... 20. Let's really make that stand out. Okay, I'll remember. Here, I'll highlight it so we can, when I'm checking my answers. Do, 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 do. Okay, see, I got lots of time left. because I, like, I got 10 minutes left, so I'm able to go at a nice pace. Next, if t is greater than zero, and this, what is the value of t? Now, remember what I said, right? instinctively factor when, when you have something like this. They've set it up for you specifically so you can substitute. We can substitute if you like, it doesn't matter to me. You can do this without substitution too, it's just a little tougher to factor. But let's take the bait and let's substitute. They want us to say that 3t equals x. So now I plug x back in and it's x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals zero. So now let's factor this guy x, x, and it's definitely gonna be minus seven plus two, because what two numbers multiply to negative 14 and add to negative five, that's these guys. So my solutions for x are negative two, whatever makes this go to zero, and positive seven, whatever makes this go to zero. But that's not the answer, right? Those are my x values. What's my t values? Now we gotta plug these back in for x. So three t equals seven, and t equals 7 thirds. Now we could also do it for this one, 3t equals negative two, but the thing is on the griddens, we don't enter negatives. So this one's out, and we're gonna enter 7 thirds, just like that, okay? Last but not least, nine minutes for question number 20. The function h is defined where a, b, and c are integer constants. If the zeros of the function are negative five, six, seven, what's the value of c, okay? This is how you do it. So wait, if they're saying that these are the zeros, it means that we should be able to, and three zeros is the max that this can have because the highest exponent is three. It means that we can represent this as x plus five, x minus six, right? X minus, the zeros, we, we put it in as x minus whatever the zero. So x minus negative five is x plus five. X minus six, 
times x minus 7. It means that that's what we would be able to factor this to. Okay. But now they're asking, what is c? Unfortunately, the only thing we can do to solve for c is we got to FOIL this entire thing. Okay. So let's just do it. Right. FOIL, FOIL. So I'm going to do this as fast as I can. x squared minus 6 plus 5 is minus x minus 30 equals x minus 7. Now I'm going to show you a fast way to factor it when you have a 3 times 2, 3 uh, trinomial times binomial. Okay, so x squared times x is x cubed minus 7x squared, right? I'm hitting this one and this one. Then the negative x. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Look how I'm stacking it, right? So I'm lining these up nicely. Negative x times negative 7 is positive 7x. And last but not least, negative 30 times x is negative 30x. Negative 30 times negative 7 is 210. Now, do I need to combine everything? Normally I wouldn't. I'd say, hey, what's the final polynomial? We know we're going to get back to this. We'll be able to solve for a and b and everything. But we don't care about a and b. We just want c. And since this is the only constant, there's no other constant but this guy, we know that our answer is 210. And that's it. Right? Let me just make sure I didn't do anything crazy. 5, 6, 7. Yeah, it's basically just multiply them, actually. Um, 5, 10, negative 30. Yeah, positive 210. Okay. There's our answer. We got 7 minutes to spare. Now, normally, if you have extra time, I would say go back and check all your work, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to check the answers right now and make sure I didn't get anything wrong. I got the test up here. Uh, right. Okay. Let's take a screenshot. All right. See if I can paste this somewhere. All right. And guys, make sure to post some of those questions right now. I'm going to get to them in one second. Let me just check all my work and make sure everything is good to go. All right. Insert image. Okay. This should make it easier. Let's just see how we're doing. Okay. Yeah. And tell me what you think about this. Uh, let me tell me what you think about this test in terms of difficulty. I mean, I, I will admit, I do think it was kind of an easy one. I, I went so fast through it. But uh, give me your thoughts. want to hear what you think. Okay. D. Oops. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Zoom out a little bit more. Okay. We got D, B, A, A, C, B, C, D, 9 is B. And then 10 is also B. Right? Yep. Good. Uh, 11 is A, 12 is C, 13 is C, 14 is D, 15 is C. The only, this was the question, 15 was the one question I thought was really difficult actually. And it's just one of those things where you need to look, when it comes to question 15 and trying to graph it, you just got to go to your instincts. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to see the full picture. You don't have to know where you got to go. Just recognize it's a graph and it's not in slope intercept form. And we're graphing, when we're graphing lines, slope intercept form is the way to go. It tells you everything. So the, just the fact that it wasn't in slope intercept form, I was, my initial instinct was let me get it there and see, see what it looks like. And then we'll take it from there. And uh, now we got the free response. That is 4.5. It's correct. Oops. 11, 12, 20, 7 thirds. See how they didn't include the negative 2 thirds? 2.33, they would have accepted. I would never do that because I'd be too paranoid because 2.33 is not 7 thirds, right? It's rounded. And then 210. All right, boom, there we go. Let me go to your questions. What's up, guys? Okay, so let me see. Okay, somebody, I see a question right here. I want to answer that. Uh, oh, where did, so the exam you can get, uh, there's a great Quora link that has a lot of these old exams. So if you, I'm sorry, Reddit. So if you search Reddit QAS, you'll, you'll be able to find some of these. And so you want to, you're asking about the, what, what did you say, the big numbers? 100x plus 40y. 
So you're saying, how would you calculate it mentally? Uh, I'll tell you the tricks that I use. For this one, anything times 100, you just add two zeros. So when I see 11 times 100, I'm just like, oh, 11 and two zeros, 1100. If it was 10, I'd add one zero. When I do something like three times 40, I know it's three times four, which is 12. Three times 40, add a zero, 120. But you don't have to do it mentally, okay? I'm really comfortable with it. You can, you're welcome to, oops, you're welcome to write it out. Three times 40. This does not take that long if you do it that way. Uh, and, and definitely do it to, in a way that you're gonna be accurate. That's super, super important. I will be doing the March makeup in uh, this week. So check my schedule. If you go to my YouTube channel and you look on my main page, there's a schedule that I posted of what I'm gonna be doing each day this week. That is going to, that test is gonna be started on Wednesday. I'm doing it Wednesday and Thursday. So I'll definitely knock that one out. I have heard that was really hard. You didn't get 19. Okay, let me, let me go to 19 again. Okay, so here's 19. This one was all about substitution. I can show you two, basically it's a factoring problem. I can show you, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it without, without substitution, okay? So I'm just gonna square this. So 3t squared is 9t squared minus 15t minus 14, okay? So this is one where we're just gonna factor it regularly instead of using substitution. Now, there's a method that I use when you have a coefficient up here called the star method. And it's pretty cool to factor these guys. So what I do is I put my a term, which is nine, here and here. I put a times c, nine times negative 14, which is 90, 36, 126, negative 126 up here, and I put my b term, negative 15, down here. Now I ask the question, what times negative, what times, what two numbers multiply against each other gives me negative 126, but then they add together to give me negative 15. Okay. So I know that was nine and 14, maybe three and nine and 14, let's see, six and six and 21, okay? So it's a, you have to do a little bit of guess and check work here, but it's six and 21, and then 21 should be negative, right? Because negative 21 plus six is negative 15. Six times negative 21 is negative 126, okay? You could do a factor tree to figure that out in different ways, but you just gotta kinda guess and check to find those numbers. Now that we have this, look at these as fractions. This is a fraction, that's a fraction. So I can divide both of these by three, this becomes two, this becomes three. Divide both of these by three, this becomes three, this becomes negative seven. And so now the way it's factored is three t plus two times three t minus seven. You see this is here. This is here, this goes here, and this goes there. So the, the top number is always my x term, the bottom number is always my constant. And if you, if you multiply this back out, you'll see it's correct. 9t squared, negative 21, positive 6 gives me negative 15, and then negative 14. Now these are my, my two solutions are what makes this go to zero and this go to zero. This one is of course 7 thirds, which is what we got before. This one of course is negative 2 thirds, which we don't use negatives in the free response. That's how you do 19. Um, let's see, repeat the circle theorem part. Yeah, the circle theorem is this, but like I said, you don't have to go out, I wouldn't recommend memorizing these rules, there's, there's a lot of them, but there's two general rules with that you should know. Um, pretty simple, actually. If you have a central angle that, that intercepts an arc, Okay, uh, hold on. So you, oh, you know what? Did I do this wrong? I think I may have even done it wrong. 30, oh yeah, no, I did it right, Never mind. <laughs> I was like, wait, what did I do? I think I, exp I, think I explained it wrong though. I think I, I got it right, but I, I explained it wrong now that, I, now that I realized what I said. I said that whenever you have an angle that intercepts an arc, it's equal to the arc. That's actually not true. That's only true for a central angle. So if this arc right here, let's say, is 80 degrees, this central angle is also 80. But if I now extend this angle back to the other edge of the circle and intercepting the same arc of 80, it's half that amount. So over here is 40 degrees. That's in general about as much as you need to know, I think on this particular aspect. But the idea was they told us that this was 30 and then they said that the other angles Right, so if we have like this angle here, 
they said that this angle, or, or sorry, they said that the arc that that angle intercepted, see how this angle comes out and intercepts this arc like that, boom. This arc is the same as this arc. Well, if those two arcs are the same, then these angles have to be equal. And that's why they were both 75. Ah, you want me to sing the song? Yeah, the song for the circle formula is like this. <clears throat> so this is to help you memorize the circle formula, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, which you definitely need to know for this test. It wasn't on this, but I guarantee you it's on the calculator. So it goes like this. x minus, wait, hold on, let me do it like this. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay, so this is like a, it's a hard thing to remember and that's why I made a song. It's in my, it's on my YouTube channel. You can look at my math music videos. It's called Circles on the Coordinate Plane. And let's see here. Let me see if we got other. Oh, the calculator section, I'm doing that tomorrow. So again, guys, go to my YouTube channel, main page, you'll see the schedule. The calculator section is going down tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. And you didn't get 19. Let me just see. I know there's so many questions. Number 16, 18, and 19. Okay. I got to go in a few minutes to get set up for my next thing. Okay, 16, 18, and 19. 16, all we do is just, it's just a basic equation where we're going to do variable isolation. First of all, what's x plus x? It's two x's, so it's 2x. Then it's 2x equals 9. Now we got to solve for x, so all we do is we get rid of this 2. When, if the 2 is multiplying the variable, to get rid of it, we do the opposite. So we divide the opposite of multiplication is division. Divide both sides by 2. Boom. x equals 9 halves, or 4.5. 18. This is a system of equations. So this takes a little longer to explain. The bottom line is you can use two methods to solve a system. You can either use substitution or what I did was elimination. And you'll notice what I did is I intentionally multiplied the bottom one by three. And what you're allowed to do as long as you multiply the entire equation, it's totally allowed to multiply the whole equation by the same number or divide it by the same number. So I multiplied it by three, so I got, hold on, let me make some room here. I got, so I'll rewrite the first one. That one I didn't need to change, luckily. The bottom one became 9x minus 3y equals 90. See, I multiplied that as well. Then I added these two together. 2x plus 9x is 11x. 3y minus 3y, gone. And that's what we want. That's how we know we've done it right. 31 plus 90 is 121. And then I just divided by 11. Boom, and I got x equals 121 divided by 11 is 11. To find y, I plug that 11 into either equation, doesn't matter which. So I could plug it into the bottom one. Or let's do the top one this time. So 2 times x is 22 plus 3y equals 31. Subtract 22 from both sides. 31 minus 22 is 9. Divide by 3, y equals 3. So there's your uh, answer there. y equals 3, x equals 11. And then you plug those guys into here. 11 times 100 is 1100. 3 times 40 is 120. Add them together. Boom, 1220. Uh, 19 I already did. So let's see other ones. Yeah. Yeah, You. so B1A, that's a good point. Mm. Okay, I see a lot of you guys were asking for 16. All right, good. I think I got all the questions. Change it in Q18. When would you need to change it in question 18? Uh, do you mean change it to substitution? Oh, number eight. Mayor, okay, I think this will be the last one and then I gotta go. Number eight. Okay. They said the sum, right? Oops. If we're talking about a sum, it means we're adding these two together. So what they're really doing is 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 4x to the fourth plus 7x cubed. Now, when we have variables with different exponents, you can only add variables with the same exponents. So like I can only add these two guys because it's like a, this is like y and this is like x, you know, they're different. And I can only add these two guys to each other because their x's have the same exponents. And then it's just like any other variable 
uh, addition problem. We add the coefficients. So 3 plus 4 is 7, x to the fourth. 3 plus 7 is 10. And then the exponents don't change, right? That, uh, the exponents only interact if these guys were multiplying. And that's it. So that's why we get this answer. OK, that was number 8 that I just did, Mayur. And hopefully that made sense. Um, let's see. I guess I can do 14 really fast. OK, 14. OK, 14 was this guy. Yes. All right. What I've said before is that in a problem like this, your instinct is, I've said this over and over. If you see a quadratic, just instinctively factor. Don't think about doing anything else. And because I didn't even know how I was going to solve it, but I saw this and I'm like, I'm probably, it's probably, probably need to factor. So something really cool happened when I factored x squared plus 8x plus 16. So I said, all right, how do I factor this? Well, I know if it's factorable, the x's have to go there. And then I said, what t multiplies to 16 and adds to 8? 4 and 4. And then I saw, oh, cool, I have a perfect square binomial. Because that's really the same as x plus 4 squared. And how do I reduce this? There's, there's, a different, there's different ways to reduce this. One thing you can think about is you can take this exponent and divide it by the root number outside. So this is really just x plus 4 over that, like that. Or the other way to think about it is whatever, whatever power this is raised to, if you turn it into a fractional exponent, the power it's being raised to isn't the numerator. The root being taken is the denominator. And then we simplify this like a regular fraction, so it's just... 1 over 2, 1 half. And that's why we get x plus 4 to the 1 half. I'm surprised they did it like this. I thought they were going to do it like this, because to the 1 half is also the same as a square root. That's how I thought they were going to write it. That's why I, I think I had it written somewhere. Oh, no, I didn't. But that's, that's what I thought it was going to be presented as. OK, thank you guys so much. Uh, John, OK, yes, you, you sure, you can be a mod if you're going to be here tomorrow. How do I do it? Can you email me and let me know, and I'll be happy to do it. All right, so Dunya, guys, if you have extra questions and you want some more individualized attention, like I said, there is a link in the description below where I'm going to a meeting, but it's going to be $10 to enter, and then you can, you can give me questions from here specifically that you want to see in detail, and you can interact with me as well. Uh, if you also want to send me additional questions to solve, you're welcome to do that. Just go in the description. It says click meeting, click on that link, and you'll pay through PayPal, and then you can join me for a half an hour session, and I'm going to do my best to give you really good individualized attention for all of you guys who are prepping for this upcoming SAT. All right, I see a lot of thanks. You guys are so welcome. Thank you all for joining. And it's amazing having so many people on today, 62 even right now. It's incredible. I'm so happy to spread the word and give out help to you guys. We're going to do it hardcore this week. I've had people tell me, their score has gone up over 100 to 150 points in this week's session just because they get to see me and they get to see my problem solving. And you guys know, if I haven't mentioned, I've scored a perfect on the SAT and I'm taking it again this Saturday. I'm, you know, I'm just really confident with my approaches and my methods. So I want to give that to you guys so you can do your best as well. So join in as many days as you can. If you can't be there live, of course, check the replay. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you like this video, please click the like button. It helps me out tremendously. So right now, if you could go ahead and click that like button, that'd be great. And if you want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for joining. And last but not least, I do have an SAT course. You can find the description to that as well below if you are interested in checking that out and purchasing that. There's a 50% discount for all my YouTube fans. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take it easy.